Okay, so you just learned some major chords and now you want to use them. I get it, I understand. So what we're going to do is uh, look at a song that is nothing but major chords. It is Hard Place by her. And actually, I lied just, just now because that right there is a B minor, but we are going to play a different major chord in the place of that B minor. And uh, later, near the end of this video, we'll talk about the theory behind why we were able to do that just fine. This song is built out of, uh, the way we're playing it is an E major, a D major, an A major, and back to E major. And look at that, all three of these major chords also have the benefit, the, you know, for the learner, of having the same shape. You can, might call this the, uh, you know, the camel shape. It's got tail, hump, and head, or the mountain shape, whatever. I mean, because, you know, different major chords are gonna look different ways. E flat major, F sharp major, but these three all look the same, which is nice. Uh, earlier, just, you know, what you heard was me playing uh, these three chords with the melody of the pre-chorus from it, because um, I think it lends itself pretty well to being played on the piano. It, it's got some movement to it, uh, some range, which is nice. That's why we kind of start straight with the, uh, the pre-chorus when we're doing a little solo piano version, at least this one. And then uh, what about the chorus melody? We, we, if we keep it moving. How does it go again? There it is. the pre-chorus, played the chorus melody, messed up in a couple places, it's okay. And then improvised a little bit, right? Um, let's go ahead and kind of analyze basically what I, what I just played, because these three chords stick with us for the whole song, pre-chorus, chorus, verse. Uh, it's all the same, it's all the same three chords, which is uh, another another great benefit to learning, to learning this tune. In fact, you'll hear in this version that I basically skipped the verse. Again, I feel like it's got that static melody, we just went from pre-chorus to chorus back to pre-chorus. And I think it sounds just fine, especially if you've got some improvisation before and after or wherever. So let's talk about a couple of things I was doing there. One, in the left hand, I was going for this tried and true series of voicings, which even on their own, I mean, is musical enough in my book. Uh, it's, of course, the root first, the fifth, and the third up top. The major third or major tenth, you could call it since it's so high up. And obviously, same shape. Two white notes in the black note. In the right hand, playing a lot of, obviously, the major chords, maybe playing the major sixth with the chord, playing an E major sixth there. One other thing that I'm very much doing for this tune and this aesthetic is uh, I'm, I'm doing this thing on a, on a guitar, it's called a hammer-on. You're replacing one note with one that's like right above it. And in this case, it's the from the major second to the major third. It's, uh, it all lends itself to this aesthetic of the song, which I would say is, is kind of strong and stoic and peaceful all at the same time. Uh, Kind of folky, I guess you could also say. And to that end, one thing that I'm not doing as I play this song is playing the major seventh. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to play E major seven at any point. Uh, it's just got a bit of a spacey dimension to it. Uh, for lack of a better word, you could say it's jazzy. Obviously, major seven chords are going to be jazzier. And that's not what we're going for. So sticking to to, to kind of just play major chords, maybe with a with a major second or a major ninth, as it's also called, and again that major sixth. Um, in fact, I mean, let's talk about what key we're in. Why why am I not playing the major seventh there? It's it's an effect choice, but it's also because of the key that we're in. We're not really in E major in this because as soon as you do this, you're playing some notes that are not in E major, right? 
you're playing D, which is not in there. What we're in instead is an E mixolydian instead of major. Mixolydian is just like major, except that instead of a major seventh over here, it's got a minor seventh. No major seventh. Minor seventh. That's mixolydian for you. And E, that's, that's what it looks like in E. So on the tiny desk version, the rendition of this song, um, you've got a piano player there called named Zoe Harris. And uh, he's definitely avoiding those sevenths, those major sevenths, as far as I can hear and tell. Uh, in fact, what he's doing too, just to talk further about what kind of key we're really in, he's got this one great riff that's, uh, which I think is awesome, you know, just about like that, right? He plays it over that E major part. Um, and if you isolate those notes, they belong to something called E major pentatonic. So not just major, but, uh, but even a little bit simpler than, than major. Uh, it's a little bit pared down. Instead of seven notes of E major, or even of E mixolydian, right? Which is what we're in, which is a major derived chord, of course, because it's got that major third. But instead, it's, it's got just five tones. And that riff that Zoe Harris plays, it begins on the B instead, right? So instead of this, it's... Uh, but it's still very much an E major pentatonic, which is just going to be simpler, homier, warmer, and exactly what, what this song kind of calls for. Which is why it's playing it. Is it pro? All right, so now let's get to that minor major substitution that we did. Let's talk about, you know, in music theory terms, why we were able to do that. Obviously, for this tune, I wanted to give you a super major chord, nothing but major chords thing. But, um, you know, then again, when I kind of first started playing it, uh, this is how I played it. I, I didn't go for the B minor myself. Um, my ear is perhaps not that good. And I was like, oh, D major works there. And uh, I like playing it both ways, obviously. And we can, we can obviously be mixing and matching. So in her's rendition of this song, which of course is the authoritative one, it's her tune, Grammy nominated, great track. Um, it's gotta be minor there in that second chord. Again. Also a great sound. It's just a little more vulnerable. It's got, it's it's a minor chord, so it's a little bit more uh, aggrieved, you know. And uh, you can mix and match. Also, hey, oh, why does this work? Ugh. Yes, uh, it's because instead of D major, she plays B minor, or rather, instead of B minor, we were playing D major, right? That's because those are relative chords and relative keys. Uh, D major. A truly major major, like that, which we're not in, but uh, is the same as B minor. It is the same seven notes. They obviously start in different places. That's the only difference. Uh, D major goes from D to D. B minor goes from B to B. Uh, and as far as we're concerned with the chords, here's uh, D major and B minor is this. Check it out. They share how many notes? They share two notes. Two out of their three notes. That's that's most notes. That's two thirds of the notes. That's so many notes. So of course it's going to work to be doing this. Or I, mean, I don't know about of course, but it just does. Instead of um, instead of this minor chord, I was playing the relative major, and uh, you can definitely mix and match. And what about in fact we have three major chords? What if we play the relative minor of all three? Um, we could do that. See how it sounds at least. Why does that work? Also, oh, also, how do you do that? Yes, yes, yes. So if you've got a major chord, all you do D major, you go three half steps down from the root. So you go zero, one, two, three half steps down, and B minor is gonna be the relative minor of D major, right? So let's do it for all three of those chords. Yep, we start with a C sharp minor. Uh, C sharp minor seven is what I'm doing, um, instead of an E major. D major, E minor, of course. All right. Uh oh, my F sharp just broke. It is. It doesn't work. That's that's the first. I'll figure it out later. I'll play it down there. Ooh, I've got a few notes not working. No good. We're gonna power through. In fact, we're kind of done. That's 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 how you could do the the, the minors instead of majors, right? But let's go back to our major chords and look at one very last thing 
in this video, which is uh, before the last chorus, there's something that happens on the studio version of this track, at least, is all the instruments drop out and it goes like this. Well, not all the instruments. You've got her singing. You've also got an electronic piano. I think a Wurlitzer or something with a lot of tremolo on it. And it goes like this. Right, and of course, you know, the juicy part is there at the top earlier. What that is, is that uh, between basically E major and D major, you might be tempted to play something off of E flat because it's right there. It's kind of a, a passing a passing note. And that's what, uh, that's what they, they do on this track. It is a E flat diminished. E flat um, half diminished specifically. And what that is, is from E flat, you've got a minor third, you've got a diminished fifth, meaning the fifth, but just a half step below, hence the name of the chord and a minor seventh in that same chord. So E major, E flat half dim, D major. And then I'm going again to A major and E major just to bring it home, right? And of course, in, in the song, it goes into its most intense chorus. I mean, this is kind of what pop songs do. Before the last chorus, you've often got the point of most tension, really the peak of the tune. Well, the peak of the tune is then that last chorus, right? But instead, you know, you could just you can end it there, whatever. Um, and there's something else about this, which I think is so great, is that uh, like any good set of lyrics for a pop song, it really matches what's happening in the music or vice versa, however you want to look at that. But, um, you know, this is this is a, a, a love song. And uh, what is it again? Oh, we've got our E major. Just as she's, uh, nope, just as she's singing this or playing this, she's singing, I wish there was a right way, which is some of the lyrics in that chorus. And to me, this sounds like that right way is just, it's, it's kind of slipping away. It's, it's there, but mm, it's just, it's not going to happen. In other words, it's complicated. But uh, you don't have to play this song in a complicated way. In fact, like I said, I think it really thrives in its simplicity. The fact that it's three major chords the way we're playing it, whether it's the verse or the pre-chorus or the chorus, it's still those three same chords. They have the same shape on a piano. And, um, and of course, Instead of playing a major scale or a miscellaneous scale, you can really, you can really kind of benefit from paring it down to these five notes, which is E major pentatonic. Anyway, there you have it. Have fun with this. Play those major chords. Enjoy. See you next time.